Hey, it's The Littlest Viking, and today I'm going to be talking to you about life in Castel. This is part three of my Foreign Legion experience. So, after you return from the farm, after your Marshal Capi Blanc, you'll spend about a week in Castel, just kind of doing, uh, like getting back into the swing of just Castel life. Um, and, and the first few days is going to be spent getting your Garde de Tenue ready for your Remise Capi Blanc. Uh, your remise Kepi Blanc will be when you officially get given your Kepi Blanc. You could do that anywhere in France. Mine was in Toulouse. Some people go to Paris. Some people go, you know, just all over the place. Uh, some are public. Some are private. Mine was private. But some are be, you know, you can have an audience of people. And that's just the ceremony making it official that you've gotten, you know, you've completed the farm. And you're officially now going from an engagé volontaire to a legionnaire. After that first week in Castel, your second week will be spent in Fumigay. Depending on if you go in the summer or the winter time, I was in the winter, so we went skiing. I don't know how it works in the summer, but I think they go like BMXing and things like that, you know, mountain biking and stuff. For us, the skiing was, we actually got shafted and we only got to go for three days of skiing because uh, of whatever crappy reason. It was something to do with like some little kids had booked the, the place or whatever and apparently kids get uh, priority over legionnaires because legionnaires aren't supposed to have fun. Uh, in Fumigay you should be allowed to you know drink as you know a lot of beer, eat a lot of chocolates. Uh, my section was not allowed to do any of that. It, it's kind of determined on like your freedom is determined by who's in charge of you and what they think you need or what you don't need and you know, a lot of times it's just, there's no real reason to it. It's just, hey, let's fuck the guys around because we can. And being the best skier in the entire section, it was nice. Well, not just the best skier, but one of the only guys who'd actually ever been skiing. Uh, we got to go up the, we got to climb up the mountain with one of the guys that works at Fumigay permanently. We got to climb up the mountain on skis with him, like right to the, the furthest chairlift and then come all the way down. So it was me and one other guy who had skiing experience, so we were allowed to do that. It was it was a really cool experience, actually. I've never climbed a mountain on skis before, so that was definitely really fun. But on the way down skiing, he actually broke his collarbone, so he was taken out of our section and put in SEA, and he had to join a, another section later on. While, while we were doing that, the rest of the guys were just down on the kitty hill, learning how to ski and then the ones that were better were put in the best group and then there was like a not there was a okay group and then there was a you know a terrible group so after uh, um, we went skiing down the hill there sorry the mountain because you'll be you'll be doing this in the Pyrenees I was put in the the best group and it was nice because only like five or six of us and we were since we were like the the better ones we got to go and ski the whole hit like the whole mountain which was a lot of fun Whereas a lot of the other groups, the ones, the guys that weren't as good at skiing, they kind of got stuck just on like the small hills the whole time. Like some of the guys didn't leave the kitty hill kind of thing. After Fumigay, you're back in Castel and you're gonna get back into the life in Castel again, you know. Uh, it's very similar to the farm in terms of timings. You know, you've got your 5.30 wake up, you know, or five. Some of some of the days we woke up at 4.30 if we had to do like a lot of shooting or different things because then you have to go to the armory and draw your weapon out. As I mentioned before in uh, the farm video, yeah, um, the Legion is very different from a regular military in that you do not have your weapon on you at all times. Um, very little time is spent with your weapon and if you if you are using your weapon that day you'll draw it out in the morning you'll use it and then you turn it back in you know you might do a little bit of cleaning and then you return the weapon and that's it uh, you'll do guard duty and different things like that where you know you go you draw your weapon you finish your guard you put it back there's you do not carry a rifle on you at all times at all it's it's a little silly but it does make some sense and because guys are running away all the time Fairly soon after you're back in Castel, you'll do your first live shoot. So the Castel actually has an indoor shooting range up to 200 meters, and you'll be shooting there, which is uh, it was a lot of fun. You know, you do you put a lot of rounds down range, which is really cool. Uh, and shortly after that, within I think within a couple weeks later, you'll be going to the Cayuse. And so the Cayuse is basically like it's a large French training area. 
Um, you know, at nighttime, it's pretty cool because you can just hear explosions and gunfire in the distance all the time. You know, the, the sky lights up a little bit. It almost feels like you're in a war zone a little bit just because there's nonstop training. You know, the US, the US military trains there, you know, every, everybody. Like it's a large, it's a large NATO training center. So there's just always, always, always something going on, which is really cool. So in the in the Cayuse, you'll be doing everything from shooting at the 50 meter, you know, walking and shooting. You know, you'll be shooting up to 600 meters. Uh, you'll do the 50 meters. You'll do a night shoot. You'll go, you know, to 25 meters. You do a lot of, you know, targets pop up, boom, boom, double taps. You'll be it's like you do a lot of really fun training. You put. In, in that one week, you'll put down hundreds and hundreds of rounds with uh, just the FAMAS. As well as you'll spend some time throwing some grenades and the rifle grenade. As those are the only weapons you do learn in your, your, your basic training uh, in the Legion. So you get to, that's the one week where you get to do everything. And it's, it's very similar to living at the farm uh, as it's also has farms located around the base. And that's where you'll you'll live and train. One of the other things uh, is your modules. So, throughout your time in Castel, after a few weeks, you'll have your first module, and you return to the farm for these modules. So you'll have module one, and then a few weeks later, you'll have module two. So how the modules work are you're you know you're going over all the stuff that you've already kind of covered. You know weapons, patrolling, map and compass. Um, you know, living in a fortified position, things like that. You'll typically either bus there and then march back, or you'll march there, bus back, or you'll march there and march back. It could be any one of those, but they do typically have one march. Your first night, for us at least, we, we set up a bivouac and we would stay there, and then we would go out and do our training for the, uh, for the day. Uh, if we if we march there, then you know the, the day was spent marching, and then you set up the bivouac. If we if we got a bus there, then we spent some of that time uh, training, and then we were in our bivouac. And then the following day, you tear down your bivouac, you train for the day, and then we went into our defensive position and set up. So the defensive position was just a bunch of holes on a hill, with uh, some fortifications kind of built up a little bit and you're th three man teams and you live in these holes all night and you'll be attacked throughout the night by your, your training staff. So mainly your corporals, uh, the sergeants and the corporal chefs and all of them, they'll be, you know, probably getting drunk down in the, down in the, the farm. The modules for us, our modules were about three days. If you count the day you go, the full day you're there and then the following day you're gone. So it's three days two nights it could be a little bit different for you guys like i have heard of some people having like a four day one or whatever so but for us ours were three one of the and then one of the other things that you'll do in castell a lot of is a lot of medicals and more physical training so when you first arrive in castell after having left oban one of the first things you'll do when you're there is you'll so you arrive on the thursday night and that friday you'll be doing some medicals and a physical test. So when you're during selection, you just do the Luc Leger and you know, your pull-ups and that's the, that's the physical test. However, as soon as you arrive in Castel, you will be expected to run the track, uh, pull-ups and a rope climb, which will be timed. The initial rope climb test for us was with legs so we did not have to uh, do it no legged. However, all the tests after was without legs. And medicals as well, you'll be doing a medical right away, you'll get lots of needles, uh, piss testing, a lot of that kind of stuff. So I mean, if you're, you know, smoking pot, whatever, you wean yourself off at least a couple months before you wanna be prepared. Like, I mean, I was smoking pot every single day before I went and I stopped just a couple months before, and I mean, I cleared through, so. And then you just you just lie to them or whatever you gotta say to get through it, right? Just say, you know, you've either never done drugs or just say you did it when you were 18 or whatever. It's, you know, so don't, don't, don't worry about stuff like that. Don't overthink it at all. 
it's kind of the big the big sort of thing that I really learned being there is don't overthink everything like a lot of stuff I was thinking before I went I really overthought it so that's just something to keep in mind just don't over don't overthink anything after you return from the farm you'll do another one of these physicals and you'll have more medicals and they're just really trying to see uh, your progression and things I don't know exactly what they're looking for with some of the stuff the physical test is obvious they want to see you get better um, as for the medicals I'm not entirely sure what what the point is and why you have so why you get so many needles I know some of the guys were saying like they speculate that because nutrition in the Legion is just so bad that they're giving us uh, nutrition within our needles or something and then they're just trying to see you know your progression with that so which is you know it's very possible at the you will sign a paper during selection saying you consent to them any needles anything and they don't ever tell you what's in them so I mean it's, you never know getting through selection medicals and, and being chosen does not guarantee you'll stay in the Legion there was uh, one of the one of the guys who was a really good friend of mine he he was told at, on our last medical interview that he was not fit to be in the Legion and they, they sent him home uh, later that week so just because you were selected does not guarantee you'll stay we had a couple other guys that a couple other things popped up. They're still in the Legion, but some things popped up and that actually held them back. So when the rest of us went to a bond at the end of Castell, they were held back uh, for more testing and just to make sure that stuff was good to go. Uh, I think the one guy had, like it was some blood work stuff and things like that. The, the daily routine in Castell, essentially it consists of, you're gonna wake up in the morning, uh, you're gonna shave, make your bed, uh, get everything ready because you're gonna fold your um, how you make your bed in the morning is the same from right from selection all the way through your training and I believe it's exactly the same in regiment as well you know you'll fold your blankets up rip your sheets off you'll roll them up and you set them up as like an X on the blankets and then you have then you've got roll call in the morning so you'll form up down on the street and you'll march out onto the parade square and Typically, it's the the beard de Semaine, so the sergeant de Semaine or a corporal chef de Semaine, whoever's in charge of uh, like that week. They come out and they do a quick roll call with everyone, and then after that, you go for breakfast in Castel. You'll just have you'll just have your piece of bread for breakfast and a coffee or hot chocolate, whatever. Uh, sometimes you're not allowed to have any of that, and you'll just grab your bread and you go back to your shacks or whatever. After breakfast, you kind of usually kind of wait around a little bit. And then as the sun's sort of coming up, you go back down, you form up again, and you march back out onto the parade square. And this time, uh, your chef de section, uh, chef de company, whoever's in charge of everything, they'll come out and talk to everyone. And they'll sort of, you know, they'll say, you know, this section's doing this today, this section's doing this today, this section's doing this today, you know, good luck or whatever, or they'll give you some pointers like you know stay focused shoot straight you know blah 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 just some just some crap so that that'll take you off into whatever you're doing for the day right up until about lunchtime lunchtime uh, the different companies have different uh, time slots for lunch so whenever your time slot is you'll go for lunch you'll finish your lunch and then after lunch uh, the French are very very hard-working people the French love their two hour breaks after lunch so right when you're done eating up until two o'clock you'll have pretty much for the most part some free time unless there's something you have to do and you're usually forced to do revision or something uh, some guys do sleep but there's the corporals or a corporal chef or someone's usually kind of about watching Corvier Cartier usually happens at about 145 and that's where the whole company will go outside and you do a sweep of the area around your company building just picking up garbage cigarette butts all that kind of stuff and then right after that that usually takes the 15 minutes till two o'clock when all your sergeants and everyone have had their afternoon nap and now they now they're coming back to take care of you again for the afternoon then you'll go into your training for the afternoon right up until supper time 
So supper time, same thing. The different companies are, are a lot of different time slots for their food. And then after that, you usually do some, you know, might have some more classes in the evening, uh, might be French class or whatever, some revision, and then you'll, you know, right up until bedtime. Uh, right before bed though, you have another company roll call. It's the exact same drill as in the morning. And then after that, you usually get to go to bed. So, you know, you'll make your bed, you'll do whatever. Um, sometimes they'll go around checking to make sure you're making your bed properly. Um, they've done that in the middle of the night before they come by, check to make sure everyone used two sheets. A lot of guys will try and use just one sheet and make their bed and, and hide things. And you know, you'll get in huge trouble for that. You know, everyone will have to wake up and you'll be doing push ups in the hallway and whatever, just cutting, you know, half an hour of shit just because some guy didn't make his bed properly. Castell is can be extremely boring you know you're just gonna be a lot of times that you're just gonna want to shoot yourself in the head it's gonna feel like because you're just so bored and there's nothing you can there's nothing to do right you'll you'll go over a lot of the same things over and over and it's a lot like near the end of being in Castell it was just a lot of revision and by that point uh, you know guys are kind of just shooting the shit you know you've learned enough you're kind of you're practicing for a lot of your final tests and things like that the weekend routine is everyone usually takes off except for uh, one sergeant or a corporal chef or whatever they'll they'll be looking after the section just one of them and then the corporals as well there'll be one or two corporals that are on uh, on duty that weekend the corporals are essentially in charge of your day-to-day -day. you know they're the ones who are micromanaging your weekend the sergeant or the corporal chef you know has an idea they might teach you like a class or something on the weekend but nothing crazy uh, you know you'll do your your fitness or whatever um, you know it's a very it's very similar like your timings for food are the same as as uh, during the week yeah, Sunday for Sunday breakfasts are nice because instead of just your typical piece of bread you also get like some sort of pastry you know might have chocolate in it or you know it's it's a little nicer than just a piece of bread which is nice one of the other things, uh, every Monday, the regiment goes on a big regimental run. So the entire regiment will form up on the parade square uh, in their companies. And then you'll go for a large uh, regimental run and you'll run within your company. So it's not like the fastest are staying at the front and whatever. You're staying in your groups and all the different companies are have different colors. So I was Twasium company, so we were yellow. And so everyone will be wearing their, their you know, company suite or their like sweater, or their uh, just their shirt. And so it looks kind of cool because all the different companies are running in the big chunks, and you'll be running through Castell. So you've got the you know the gray company, and you've got you know the green, the black, blue, red, yellow. It looks really it looks really cool, and there's just hundreds of you. Regular barracks life, it's pretty simple, you know, no no washer dryer, you do all your all your washing of all your clothes in the sink and then you have your balcony uh, two two like rooms will share one balcony. So you've got you know sixteen guys roughly fighting for space to hang all their clothes to dry on this tiny little balcony. And it takes about a day or two for everything to dry properly. Uh, so sometimes, you know, because you're in a bit of a time crunch, you're wearing wet clothes and things like that. After after a few weeks in Castell, you should be allowed to go to the store. There's a store on site, and you're gonna be you're gonna be expected to buy everything from uh, your own toilet paper and resupplying, you know, anything you need, shaving cream, all that kind of stuff. The Legion doesn't provide you with any of that kind of thing, so. You'll buy like a nine pack of toilet paper and have to find space for it. And sometimes, you know, you'll go in with another guy and you'll split it or something, but you'll be expected to buy all of that stuff yourself, as well as some of the rooms don't always have a mop or proper cleaning stuff. So you'll, you'll be expected to have to go then buy like a new uh, raclet or whatever for cleaning the room. So you, you're really taking care of your own stuff. The Legion doesn't provide you with with really anything, it's extremely, extremely third world. So if you're coming from a first world military, it will be it'll be a bit of a shock at how much time you waste doing nothing 
and just shit that you you wouldn't be doing you know it cuts into a lot of good training time just doing nothing same thing with life at the farm after every single meal you'll be yeah you have to clean the the chambers you'll be cleaning the hallway you'll be cleaning the bathroom the stairwells you'll be doing all of that kind of stuff different people will be uh, told to do different different things if you if you fucked up so at some point and they're you know Sometimes they'll make you do a lot more cleaning than, than other people. One of the other big things with uh, being in Castell is service days. So these days are where your section will be in charge of taking care of the whole base. And it alternates from the different companies in the different sections. But you'll have days where it's your section's turn. And some guys, so guys will have to get sent to the, the ordinary to work or the sergeant's mess. Um, some guys will work just doing general cleanup and things. The two big things with the service days are your guard. So you've got guard van cat and guard unity. And the difference between them is, so guard van cat, they're in charge of the in and out of the base. Like, so they operate the gate and they're in charge of at nighttime as well there's a back gate and you'll send guys out and to watch that back gate and everything's in a two hour shift you'll have a guy in inside a control room operating the gates uh, for the different parking lots opening and closing the main gate and controlling the gate that goes off into the sergeant's mess and stuff when you're not physically working uh, and you're inside like the guardhouse you are a lot you can sleep or uh, you know, read a book, review, whatever. And Guard Unity, they, they're they the ones who, they, they actively go out and patrol the base periodically throughout the day. They're armed with, and both, both guards are 24 hour period of time. So you'll do it for a full 24 hours. Everyone on guard will be given live rounds as well, in case anything happens. As we know, terrorism in Europe has been a very real thing in the recent past year. And sometimes depending on who's in charge that that night when you're on guard you'll be allowed to you know eat uh, pizza sometimes like so there was a couple times where we were allowed to order pizza uh, you're pretty much you can drink unlimited coffee uh, it's it's not too bad it's actually guard is one of the is one of the better goes depending on who's in charge of you while in Castel this is where you're gonna start practicing more stuff as well like your obstacle course uh, your eight kilometer run. Um, one of the things I forgot to mention with uh, the physical testing that really matters is not just with doing the pull-ups, the rope climb and the Cooper test, you'll also have to do a swimming test, which you'll be expected to swim a hundred meters for time. Uh, the longer you do it, the fact like if it takes you a long time to do it, that's not a problem. It's just, you'll score lower than the guy who did the hundred meters faster than you. That's all. Uh, but if you finish it, doesn't matter if it takes you five minutes or, or two minutes. As long as you finish it, that's the point. Uh, you'll be expected, you'll have a two to three second pause after, and you'll have to swim 10 meters holding your breath under the water. Uh, with the PO, or sorry, the parkour obstacle, which is the obstacle course, you'll be expected to do, it's a, uh, I mentioned it a little bit in the, in the last video, but you'll be expected to do it in under five minutes. Uh, that's what you need to pass the training, as well as the eight kilometer run. And you'll expect to do the eight kilometer run in under an hour. Uh, the eight kilometer run is with a 25 pound backpack. Uh, they will weigh it and you will be expected to run that. You may do it, you may do a few practice runs and you, or you may just, like my section, we didn't do that run a whole ton. Like we ran just in regular training, but that specific run, we only ever did uh, I think like one practice fully on that on that track and then We they gave us our backpacks, you know We had to get our backpacks ready and then it was boom We did that test like the one time like there was no work up really to it or anything like with the physical training that we done before obviously we were kind of getting to that point however It just wasn't something that we'd like done a lot of. So it was it was a painful run by, by all means, absolutely. But that's something you will do. So if you can't swim, work on your swimming. Running's a big thing you need to make sure you can do. Uh, the rope climb on all the tests after, yeah, you will be expected to do it without any hands, or sorry, without any legs.
later on, while you're in, uh, in Castel, one of the things you'll be allowed to do is carte libre. So this is where they give you a few hours. You can go out into Castel. You'll be dressed up in your uniform, and you'll be allowed to do whatever you uh, not whatever you want, but you can kind of eat what you want. Um, you can drink some alcohol. Of course, they can't know you're drinking alcohol. We, my course was given three carte libres. I actually wasn't allowed to go on the first two. I was injured just before our first module, and because of that. I was not allowed to go on carte libre. Uh, my second carte libre, I wasn't allowed to go on because uh, my my room, we decided to buy pizza one night. Um, of course, you're not allowed to buy pizza, so we went on like an undercover mission sort of deal to go buy pizza, and we had the whole thing done. And then this one, one of our sergeants, who's just, he was a total psycho, he just lit into us, he found out, and he just, he. Yeah, we got we ended up becoming the pizza commandos for the rest of that course, and you know it was fun because we we owned it, and uh, but you know it wasn't so bad because when Cartier leave happens, the entire the entire section goes out in, into Castel, and none of your training staff is around, no one's around. You're given to the bureau de Semaine, but they're not watching you all the time. So you know as we're doing our work and like chores around the company and, and the regiment and stuff, you know we we'd go off and buy chocolate bars or we ran to the the foyer and we would buy just like whatever we wanted cookies sandwiches everything and uh you know we had a, we had we had a really good time we probably had more freedom than the guys that were actually on carte libre to be honest so it wasn't so bad um but my third carte libre uh was was it was a lot of fun you know it was actually my birthday on my third carte libre and so we got drunk uh, not terribly drunk, but we drank a decent amount. And then when we got back, they actually breathalyzed us. And, well, not not everyone, but they, they picked me and the one English guy out because English speakers have a, have a bad habit of drinking and stuff. So they picked us out because it would be a guarantee win for them. They took us to the, the, the MP's office kind of thing, the military police and the Legion. They breathalyzed us and we came up, obviously, positive. And so that night we, I think I spent about six or seven hours scrubbing the bathroom with, with my buddy there. Uh, we had to be, we just threw buckets of water. They made us just throw buckets of water all over the, the bathroom. And we had to get down on our hands and knees with little brushes and scrub the whole thing with our rucksacks on our back, packed, ready to go for, you know, a ruck march, cam paint all done up. And we had to do that right up until bedtime. So that was a good that was a good 25th birthday for me. It was a lot of fun. Uh, your second carte libre, you'll be allowed to go buy a cell phone that has no picture. Um, like you're not allowed to take pictures, so no camera, no internet, just talk and text. And then you'll have to buy SIM cards and you'll have to charge them up uh, to be able to talk. And then you'll be al you'll be allowed to use your phone on the weekend or whatever. Uh, we actually had some extra phones in our room that we hadn't turned in so we were using them throughout the week you know in the evenings and like I made a few phone calls you know leaving the shacks going you know I left the whole I would leave the company building in the middle of the night and just go make a phone call as the time difference there and here is you know it made, it made more sense for me to talk then instead of the times they were giving us um, so I mean Breaking the rules is something everyone does. You can get it, but just don't get caught. You know, it's it's like a very Spartan sort of life. You know, you have a lot of nothing, but, you know, just like, you know, go out and do stuff, but don't get caught kind of thing. And that's that's sort of the whole life. That's that's how you're going to make your life a lot better there. And then the, la the last thing sort of with Castell is you're gonna be doing your raid march. So the raid march is at the very end of your training. It's sort of the it's it's sort of the climax of everything you've done. Uh, it'll be it's a week long. Uh, the march itself is only three days. Uh, we got to do ours in the Black Mountains, which was a lot of fun. We you know it was it was hard as we were rucking uphill for most of it, um, or not just uphill but up mountain. Um, you know, I took the skin off my one of my toes like really bad the first day and then I had to just endure that for the rest of the week. Uh, 
at the at the end of the raid march you return to castell and you have a couple days we, we set up a bivouac and you'll spend the next few days they call it the rally and you'll spend the next few days doing all the stuff you've learned you'll be testing everything so you'll be expected to know you know the radios uh, your weapons drills you know patrolling you'll be, you'll go like on a little bit of a walk you'll do it in a two-man team you'll go for a walk and you'll have to observe for things that people have left behind you'll have to you'll have to observe for activity your enemy activity you know looking for you know maybe a drop magazine uh, remnants of a grenade uh, sometimes there'll be a guy who's in the bush actively you know looking for you and then you you have to engage him things like that and you're tested on everything as well as you'll be doing a, a modified version of the obstacle course where you'll be wearing your backpack you'll be you know wearing body armor and you'll have to you'll do all the you'll do the obstacle course except you won't do the hard things like you won't have to climb the ladder or anything like that because you'll be wearing about 50 pounds worth of gear but you'll have to do like an 80 kilogram body drag 100 kilogram body drag um, you'll be going down into holes up things like that so it actually is really tough you know you'll be begged by the end of that one once you're done all your testing they'll give you your classmate so the accumulation of all your tests so how well you speak french fitness uh shooting all those tests come together and how well you place they, they give you an overall score and that score determines where you place in the section your placement within the section determines whether you're going to get the regiment you want or not so how the regiments work is you ask for a specific regiment and depending on how many spots are available in that regiment and who's asked before you will determine whether you get your regiment or not so typically does re and does rep have the most spots as a lot of guys are running away or or uh, like deserting from those units so they need to constantly replenish their their ranks the hardest regiments to get in will typically be the cavalry and the uh the, re the genie regiments the engineer regiments as the guys there from what i've found out they're typically happier in those regiments and they stick around a lot longer uh the 13 13 dble right now they are kind of rebuilding themselves so a lot of guys are getting sent there as well so how it works is if there's only four spots in let's say you know premier genie and you place fifth in the entire section then and the first four guys ask for the genie like that regiment and there's only those four spots you may not get that regiment so but Realistically, the first four guys are probably going to be hardcore and, and ask for Dizium Rep or something, you know, it's just how it is. So, you won't have to worry about that, but you do want to place better than, than most of the guys, so you do guarantee a position in the regiment that you do want. You'll have an interview with your chef de section, you'll have an interview with the company commander, and then and asking like for the regiment that you wish to wish to go to. A day or two after the interview with your company commander, you'll be sent off to Oban again, and you'll stay there uh, for a day or two, and then you'll be shipped off to all the, you know, whichever regiment you, you, you chose to go to, and you'll start your regimental training. That about sums up this video. So, I mean, again, any questions, comments, um, you know, I, I may have forgotten something again, uh, you may want something touched up a little more uh, in depth. Feel free to ask any questions. Uh, I will get back to everyone. Stay tuned for a couple more videos coming your way in the near future here. I'm going to be talking about why I joined the Legion and why I left the Legion, which is I know something some of you guys are interested in. I hope these videos have you know helped you out, answered any questions you may have, and I look forward to uh, you know seeing you guys again.